I started to get to, to meet some of the more, if, if you like, the iconic names of people we know uh, through working in the media, through doing some media work. And um, I did some work in the 90s. Um, I did some BBC work and um, came into contact with Frankie Fraser. Yeah, he was a proper villain. He was the real deal. He, he was the only one I've ever met. There was nothing about Frankie that wasn't to do with crime. Everything was to do with crime. Very bright, very sharp. Um, I worked with him in the 90s on a programme and then I worked with him in, in the late 2000s on, on a, on a programme on a, uh, for, for a TV programme. And I always liked talking to him because he, he didn't try to bullshit you. It was absolutely straight. This is what I am. You know, what do you mean businessman? I'm a villain. This is what I do. And I'm really good at it. But he also had that intimidating thing about him. He, he genuinely was intimidating. I mean, Frank was, I think, 5'5". Five, five. Um, a small man. But he had something about him. He had an aura about him that was intimidating right to the end. You know, I think he was in his 80s when I last saw him. And, and he was still, this is who I am. This is what I do. But he, he loved it. It was with him. It was joyous, you know. When he cut people, he talked about how he used to cut them and he do this and do it. you flinch and oh no, you know, yeah, I did this, I did that, and he was this and he was that, you know. He, he spent over forty years in prison, didn't have a day off of good behaviour. That, that was that was him. He was a criminal. It's what he did. It's who he was. It's, it was his identity. There was nothing else about him that wasn't to do with that, you know. That wasn't to do with with crime. And he had a, a mind like a trap. He could go back and talk about. Yeah, 1938, um, some magistrates caught the name of the magistrate and and, um, and Jack Spot uh, grasped up someone else in that court and he knew the guy who did it and knew his uncle and knew his relations and he knew it. That was his world, you know, he really knew it. And if you said something, I, I spent a lot of time with him and you, if you said something that was wrong, he said, no, you're wrong there, boy, because it was bang, 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 this is, this is what I'm... But the intimidating thing, when we went to we went to meet him, I was doing a radio program for Radio 4 about crime in the Second World War. And that's when Frank really started to get involved, you know, in, in, in crime. And we went to his flat. He was living in the Angel then. And um, we I was with a BBC producer and we, we, we rang the uh, the entry phone and a voice came. He said, hello, uh, hello, the, hello uh, Mr. Fraser, it's uh, BBC here. Hello? This is John Major, who was the Prime Minister. This is John Major. And we look at each other, God, he, he really is mad, Frankie Fraser. You know, he's bonkers. What's going on? What do you want? John Major here. What do you want? Uh, 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 just joking, boy. Come up. So he's got you. You know, he's got you. That manipulate. That's what proper gangsters do. They manipulate. They manipulate. So he's got you on the back foot straight away. And then we walked up the stairs and he was waiting for us outside his flat. Now he's five foot five. And he's standing with the light behind him. He's got jet black dyed hair, you know, jet black shiny hair. He had a smart shirt on, tailored trousers. And he was standing at the top of the stairs above us. You know, he knew what he was doing. Everything about him was about manipulating the situation, presenting himself in this intimidating way. Once we got in his flat, he was an absolute gent. He was very good, fantastic. But that is who he was. That's what he did. And he was a wine-up merchant. The second time I met him, I met him in um, off the Walworth Road in a pub there. And um, I was having a drink with him. He used to drink um, vodka and lemonade. And um, he got a bloke dressed up as um, Sherlock Holmes to walk about behind me. And he was dressed up in a full cloak with a big pipe and everything. And he was walking around behind me just to wind me up. You know, that was it. And that was Frank. That was what he, that's what he did. He was, he was a funny man, but he was 100% villain. The what was his upbringing? Straight family. Um, he, 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 he regretted. He, he, he said on a number of occasions, he said that um, he was at a disadvantage in the criminal world because his family were all straight. If he'd have been from a criminal family, they'd have known what solicitor at the phone, they'd have known how to do things. But he didn't. As he said, he had to, he had to find out for himself how to become a criminal. And very early on, I think he was about nine years old, he was working for the Sabinis, the, the race, course, uh, race course operators. He was working for them as a bucket boy at the, at the race courses, wiping down the, uh, the blackboards of the, of the bookies and getting, and getting paid. So he, he started off when he was, when he was just a kid. And, uh, and he loved it. He liked crime. He liked crime. He liked criminals. He valued loyalty. That old, all that old-fashioned loyalty and respect thing which I'm wary of, and it, usually it's a complete con and they're all stitching each other up. I've 
he wasn't like that. He was he was proper old school, which is why he ended up doing over forty years inside. Yeah, I know we talk about people. Though some of these men can be intelligent and smart, but if you're serving over forty years in prison, you're not that smart either, are you? Doesn't seem that doesn't seem that smart to me. But it was a way of life that he that he mm-hmm. chose. It was a way of life that he chose. And when you when you read the the beatings that he took, and, and when he talked about the beatings that he took as well, you know, he had the he had the birch, he had the cat and nine tails, and he was badly badly beaten when he was when he was in prison. Um, by, by, the, by prison staff, you know, and he dished it out as well. It was, it was a way of life. Violence was a way of life, 100% way of life. He liked money, he enjoyed money, but violence was really important to him, and villainy was everything, absolutely everything. <laughs> 